Okay, I'm making this video about uh, something that's just caused me a great deal of frustration. Having virtually assembled everything, I thought I was on the home straight, uh, and I discovered that the headlamp uh, eyebrow, the chrome, um, when it must have been being re-chromed or something, I did, I don't know, but the tabs broke off. These are the tabs that go down through here, um, one about there and one about there. They were short, um, so I'd put all new tabs on the uh, long bonnet section, and I thought, nice five-minute job. I'll just uh, push those down firmly over the headlamp and clamp it up. But when I went to do it, I found that the tags were too short. There were no tags sticking through, so very annoyingly I had to disassemble everything. So I thought, whilst I was doing it, I'd just maybe post another quick video. It might be helpful, I don't know. Um, to do the uh, tags, I ended up uh, resoldering, putting new solder tags using the brass ones that you do for the uh, long strip. I used those by uh, soldering them on first of all, but I wasn't overly convinced the solder was going to hold strongly, so I also used some JB Weld just to secure it in as well. I don't know if you've used JB Weld. Uh, it's a two-part epoxy. Uh, I found it extremely useful. Uh, good metal-to-metal -metal adhesive and fills uh, small gaps as well in metal. Uh, so I soldered it on and then I uh, redid it. So I've doubled up on the uh, on the uh, pegs that come through, the little tabs that come through. Whilst I was doing it, I thought I'd just talk a couple of other things that uh, when I was doing it were irritating. First of all, this top joint here, uh, to get this to match in very neatly, as you can see here, it has to be cut. Uh, and I've just cut it with that section here, as you can see. Uh, what I will do is that then slides underneath quite happily. Can't hold camera and slide it in, but it does, as you can see on the other side. Uh, and I will just tack that in with a little bit of, uh, of sealant. What I use, the sealant I prefer to use is Cicaflex, uh EBT uh, in black. Um, it's very good as an adhesive. It's very easy to remove with acetone. Uh, if you get it on the bodywork or you get it on your fingers or anything else like that. I buy acetone now in litre containers. Uh, it's typically used for uh, nail bars who use it to remove uh, ladies' uh, nail, uh, uh, artificial nails. But that's very good because it does actually clean everything up extremely well. So if you ever get the Cicaflex smearing onto things, don't worry about it because you can just get it off with that. But it works as a very good adhesive and when it cures as black and it cures quite quickly, forms an adhesive bond quite quickly, it's exactly the same colour as the rubber. So that's an advantage. The other thing I just wanted to point out is this strip that comes all the way down here. When you're fitting that and connecting it in here, um, be sure that you cut oversized holes in the rubber to fit over the uh, the little uh, studs that you have to put in, the pop rivets, they're special pop rivets. These are the ones here. And what you want to use are the little washers that you can just see on the side that sit underneath. The reason you do that, you want to lift up the pop washer, the, uh, the pop rivet, slightly above uh, where it normally sits. You don't want it flush to the metal. You want the rivet underneath, underneath the cup, and between the metal and the cup, so that when it sits up, you've got enough space to fit in the rubber trim that comes here because if you don't this rubber trim you'll find it's really really awkward um, do persevere with putting it in rather than sort of cutting and bending it the only place you would have to give it a little nick to get around is here uh, on this side uh, I've given it a little nick and you can just see it's tucked under I'm going to sort that out because I don't quite like the fact that it sits in too close down there but just nick the top edge and you'll find it will bend around quite happily here um, to get the headlamp eyebrow off of course. I'm sure most of you know that there's a screw, there's one screw, where are we here, one screw here and there's one screw there, that's fixed behind here at the moment. Uh, so that's how you get that off and to get this fitting off here, the shroud that goes round, there are four screws, there's one here, one there and then there's one at the bottom tucked down there somewhere, yeah one down there and one on the other side. So therefore screws come off and then you've got the rubber uh, seal behind it. Uh, the rubber seal just acts as a, a waterproofing seal to get behind it. Uh, so that's removing there. And then the headlamp just uh, clamps on with the uh, three prongs here. You want to take the opportunity to clean, the up, clean that up before you put it back in. The other thing that's a little bit irritating uh, is getting the spring back on. 
uh, that's the spring and that clips onto the bracket here uh, I think I can probably demonstrate a way I've found to do that because if you try and do it with pliers or fingers it's frustrating and the spring pings out and you lose it and you curse and swear I'll just pass the camera to my wife for a second to see if I can get a, get her to picture and then we've stopped no battery I don't know we're back on Somewhere. Yeah, very good. Um, yeah, what you want to do is just get a screwdriver into, get the spring into the little hole here. And then if you can just see, I insert the screwdriver into the spring just like there. Can you see what I'm doing there? And you can then see inside, push with the screwdriver and just clip it there. I don't know if my wife can show you that. So I'm just pushing it in with the screwdriver. It doesn't stretch the spring, but it does mean that it fits in very easily. So that's just a little way I do it, which makes life a lot easier. And then you can get that in to one, first of all. Like that. And then the other one will just bend up a little bit and you clip the other one in there. So that then sits in like that and all you've then got to do of course is to just screw these down. That gives you the adjustment. You won't be able to set the adjustment up until you've got all the electrics and the lights working and you, you can put it in front of something to measure the, <clears throat> the angle that you're doing things in. So roughly set it up and I'd recommend not putting the, um, pick the camera, not putting the chrome surround on because it's irritating if you then have to take the chrome surround off to just the headlights. But you do want to put in the rubber sealant diaphragm around before the chrome trim goes on anyway. And obviously it's got a notch in it. And it goes on this way round. With a little notch that catches under or around the, the bottom clip. Can't really see the bottom clip in this light, but it's, it's just about... Uh, just about there and that's the bottom clip that the chrome surround finally clips in so when you're putting the chrome surround on the chrome surround sits on the top in that groove there and that groove there so the chrome surround and I always put it on just so the I'm sorry about this, so that that little seam in the chrome sits at the bottom, so you don't see that. Have that on the bottom, put the top edges in first of all, like that. Top edges can sit in there, and then you can just push it in, and it will clip down. But obviously the rubber diaphragm goes on first. And that rubber diaphragm sits that way around, and just sits all around the edge there. Hold that for a second, love. So if you match that up to there and put that edge under there, you can then pull that round. So it sits in in that effect. So that's how it would sit. I haven't, haven't obviously finished it neatly, but like that. And then the chrome trim just pushes straight over there. So uh, that's really all I wanted to talk about and show you today. Just some irritating things that uh, instead of being a five minute job, turned out to be a few hours to get everything done because I ended up having to do left side over here and then the right side. But I think they've turned out okay. They, the seal here works quite nicely at the top and the seal around the headlight works okay I think and down there I think that's still some of my <laughs> some of my blood there <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> for any vegetarians watching but uh, I hope that interested you I might do another one uh, just talking about how to do the the seals on the bodywork here um, again I found it impossible to put the seals on unless you use adhesive. I use the Seekerflex again, just to tack them onto the edge of the chrome. I'd strongly recommend doing that, then you can get a nice, nice finished edge with that where it turns round. 
and they work in quite well. But if you don't use the Secaflex adhesive, particularly with these, if you don't use the adhesive on those joints, you'll find they ping out as you put one side in and they ping out as you put the other side in and you're forever chasing yourself around trying to do it. So I resorted in the end to using sealant. I thought that made life a lot easier. And as I say, don't worry about getting the sealant on the bodywork or the chrome because acetone will just pull it straight off again and won't leave any residual marks. I'll just show you the back one I did because they worked out quite well again. So that's how I've curved it round here to finish those off. Uh, it's notoriously a pain to do those, but if you do it uh, gently and you don't cut it, you can get quite a nice curve going around and underneath. I might just trim that off because it does hang down beneath the body and I think really can't make up my mind. I think it would be neater if I, if I trim that off as well. Um, so they're just the points I wanted to uh, bring to your attention about how to do the different uh, sealants and I recommend the Secaflex with acetone and I recommend sticking the seal, these seals onto the bumpers before you try and fix it onto the bodywork otherwise um, A you risk scuffing the bodywork and the paintwork with the edge of the bumper as you're offering it up and secondly you get it offered up and the seal pops out and then you run out of hands to hold everything together so I hope that was uh, of some use to you Anyway, I'll get around to maybe posting something else on another topic shortly. Maybe the glazing that I've done. Bye-bye.